Hey folks, Brendan here from Blue Light, and for those of you who haven't seen any of my videos before, over the past several years I've been coaching and supporting people through the police recruitment process. Um, and that's what this video is about tonight, except it's about the changing focus of the police recruitment process and how it's starting to expand beyond the normal entry routes. So here we are in Leeds. Um, I've just finished one of my seminars. You can find out a little bit more about my seminars and courses by clicking on the link below. And as a quick aside as well, I've also got a Facebook group of over 5,500 people who are all active contributors to that group. Um, the group is there solely to support people through the police recruitment process. So today I was running a seminar that's going to help people for the National Police Assessment Centre. Um, this week I also ran a workshop down in the uh, East Sussex area for those who are interested in the direct entry detective scheme. So a lot of forces now, recognising that they are short of detectives, are going outside of the service to recruit people directly into the role of detective. Unheard of really. Um, years ago, being a detective was one of the most hard fought competitive roles you could um, uh, hope to apply for and um, the positions were held on to like gold dust. Um, now we're finding it hard to recruit people into the role. Uh, there's something there for the service to address in terms of why is it so difficult to get people to want to be detectives. But the conversation um, that we had this week, which is why I'm making this video, um, sort of made me think a little bit about do people really know what they're letting themselves in for? So one of the questions you may get asked, because I think what uh, recruiters will be interested in when you go for your interview, and this changes, this is different right across the country, all of you will still have to do the National Assessment Centre, or if you're applying for the, Met, the Metropolitan Police Day 1, which is the new version of the Assessment Centre, which eventually will roll out right across the country. And then you'll do some form of detective assessment. At the moment, the force is doing things like paper feeds, presentations, and interview. That may change though, because there's no national, you must do it this way to forces. So every force is doing it differently. But one of the things I think they'll be looking at is your emotional resilience and your resilience to dealing with complex and difficult problems. And the reason being is that the role of being a detective requires a huge amount of resilience. How can you bounce back after dealing with something incredibly complex, incredibly disturbing, incredibly emotional? How are you gonna to manage to bounce back and get back into your role? Now, those who I spoke to, one or two of them have said, gosh, you've almost put me off. Um, because often when you're asked the question, what impact will being a police officer have on your personal life? And I see this on application forms all the time. People saying things like, I might miss parties and events, I'll have to work shifts, I might have to work at Christmas, I may have to have cancelled rest days. Um, and that's about it really, which for me is not demonstrating the real impact of being a police officer. Because there's two areas that um, are really going to impact on you. I'll cover the second one in more detail. But the first one is, it's highly likely someone's going to try and hurt you. It is. Someone at some point in your career is either going to hurt you or try and hurt you. I've been assaulted on several occasions. I've had blood spat in my face that's gone in my mouth. I've had a weapon pointed at me, um, a shotgun loaded. I've had knives pulled on me. I've been headbutted. I've been bitten. I've been punched. I've been kicked. I've been bitten by police dogs and dogs. Um, actually, not being flippant, I've retired now. Um, part of me is just grateful I managed to get to the end of my career in one piece because some of my colleagues didn't. There was one or two of my colleagues, actually one springs to mind, who uh, died in the line of duty, um, which is you know, really sad. Um, that individual went to work in the morning to do a day's work and didn't come back. So, um, and that's happened to more than several police officers over the years. Um, there's probably been more police officers killed in the line of duty in this country than, the, than all of the armed services put together in terms of armed services, members of the armed services that have died in the line of duty in this country. I don't want to disrespect people who work for the armed services uh, because they give up their lives and they're prepared to give up their lives in fighting the battles and fighting in war zones outside of this country. Uh, so accepting Northern Ireland and the past there, I think more police officers have died in the line of duty than all the armed services combined in this country, certainly over the past few decades. So there's that, uh, someone's gonna try and hurt you. 
Um, you're going to come home with bumps, scrapes, cuts, and you're going to need to have to explain those to your loved ones. Now, what are they going to think every time you walk out of the door? How are you going to come back? There's one of my colleagues went to work um, and he didn't come back from work. He's alive still, but the next time his wife saw him, he was in hospital, he was unconscious, he was in an induced coma, and he had all sorts of tubes and things hanging out of him. That's a reality. Not for everyone. I don't want to put a real donor, downer on you joining the best job in the world, because it really is, but it's going to have an impact on you in respect of physical assaults. And then there's the other impact, which, which I think is hidden, that doesn't get talked about that much, and that's the impact on your mental health and well-being. Um, including myself, I do not know many officers who have done three decades in the police who haven't come out of it with part of them hurt a little bit in terms of what's going on in there and in there, in the heart and in their minds. Because it does impact on you. Um, any retired police officer who tells you they've not gone home and just cried without knowing why, or um, they've not felt incredibly upset about something and they can't explain why, or they can't explain why, is either a psychopath or a liar or both. Because this job will get to you. You cannot deal with the cumulative effect of dealing with misery after misery, after trauma, other people's trauma, maybe your own trauma, or seeing young people, children, either dead or hurt. You're going to see dead people, you're going to see a lot of dead people, um, and sometimes they're going to be in varying forms of decomposition. Some of them might have died just recently, some of them might have been there for weeks, months. That's going to have an impact on you. Dealing with people's misery is going to have an impact on you. Dealing with people's trauma is going to have an impact on you. Every person you arrest is going to have some story behind their life which is traumatic. And it's not easy. So I'd like to have a good think about that. And importantly, how are you going to support yourself and how are you going to support others once you're in the service? Uh, because it's okay not to be okay. In the past in the police, police officers have bottled it up. And um, at times, how it's escaped, how the pressure cooker of that stress and strain has escaped has often been harmful for that officer psychologically um, and for others around him. So please have a good think about how you're going to recognise when you may be suffering from some kind of um, stress, strain, trauma as a result of what you're going to be dealing with in the future. Especially if you're going to be a detective. Because detectives for me, having been one in the past, are dealing with some of the most traumatic things that are going to happen in people's lives. So have a good think about that. Have a good think about the impact it's going to have on you. Have a good think about how you're going to answer that question that most people can answer with ease. So how was your day today? darling. And only an hour ago you were holding a dead baby in your arms looking for signs of any trauma or uh, impact or any suspicious circumstances in the death. Have a think about how just a few hours before that you may have dealing with someone who you're the first person they tell about the fact that they've been raped multiple times over the past several years by a close member of their family. And all sorts of other things that are just going to seem so traumatic they will have an impact on you. But if you could just remind you, it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to talk about it. It's okay to have those feelings. And everyone's individual, everyone is going to be affected in their own individual way. So normally my videos are quite upbeat, but um, I was just reminded of that when I had this conversation with some of the potential detectives that we, I worked with this week. Um, now I think some of them had got it, some of them had worked that out, but. Some of them just hadn't. Some of them just hadn't thought about the trauma that the job is going to present to them and some of the trauma they're going to feel as a result of witnessing and dealing with that trauma. It does have an effect. Fortunately, there's a lot forces are doing now to try and support officers. So take a look at Chief Constable Andy Rhodes. He's the lead for this um, from Lancashire Constabulary, what he's doing to support the National Police Chiefs Council in having a strategy to help support police officers who may be feeling the stress and strain of dealing with multiple traumatic incidents or even a single traumatic incident. Have a look at what your force is doing that you want to apply for to see how they are supporting officers um, once they join. Um, and if you maybe just Google, it's okay not to be okay, please, it might bring up some interesting websites for you to take a look at. There's lots of various charities that are cropping up now to help support police officers, but please, no matter what you do once you're in, look out for yourself and look out for others.
things, uh, offer support before they ask for it, and hopefully people will offer you support before you ask for it. Look out for each other, folks, because it's a tough job out there, um, and I, I want you all, all of my clients, all of those people who follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, watch me on YouTube, I want you all to have a successful career, and I pray that you all come back safe and well, and without having to suffer from harm, and you get to the point where you leave one day, and you look back on it and think, phew. Anyway, hope it's helped in an odd sort of way, maybe. Um, if you've got any other ideas for videos that might like me to put together, please do let me know. And if you've got any comments or you want to ask me any questions about this video, like they always say at the end of television programs, there isn't a helpline, but you can always contact me via the email address on the website or via Facebook or just phone the office and I'll be more than happy to talk to you about how this job may really impact on your life. I'll speak to you very soon. Bye-bye for now.